Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Toogie's Take podcast. Happy Friday to you all. It's us, the guys, the fellas, joined once more. Toogie here, joined once more by Mr. Endo Mills. I'm less high this time, I promise. <laughs> You could still be high and be less high than you were on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. How bad was, was it? That bad? I didn't look. Go back watch the, the show video. back. There you go. Endo doesn't listen to his it. own show. Like confirmed. Sin is here as well. Back, of course. Sin, you always miss very interesting shows. So uh, today Apparently. will be fun as well. Oh, I didn't know you wanted me to talk after that. Well, I was setting, I was setting the stage. I was setting the stage. It's always like, hey, you said it's been, been interesting like, shows. It's been an interesting... You know, <laughs> we're going to leave this all in. We're leaving it in. Yeah. It's perfectly fine. Sometimes you try to set them up, get you to knock them down. Other times you stare at the wall and say, hmm, yep, so that's a wall. I was just, I was too busy kind of picturing what Endo just blitzed out of his mind would have been like. Oh my, it was like the weird, I, I, from what I can't remember, nothing. Just everything made sense with everything. Yeah, it was bad. Perfect. That's, that's, that's nice. I, I can't even get high like that anymore. I just, I just fucking have a panic attack. Mm. <laughs> and if you want to stop having panic attacks in regards to your male grooming, make sure to go to Manscaped, of course, one of the sponsors of this show. You can use code Tookie for 20% off and get free worldwide shipping as well. Well, for a variety, of course, of top-notch products to get the best tools for the job, you go to Manscaped. You get the lawnmower for your nuts. Won't have to worry about anything moving forward. You can get the weed whacker for those nose and ear hair. Sin knows. He's over 30. It's a problem. I'm going to be 28 in a month. It's a problem. It's ridiculous. It's one of those things that just catches up on you. Madscape, get ahead of the curve. Take care of your balls. You can also, of course, uh, click the link in the description, whether or not you're listening in the audio form or on the Tookie Stick Podcast YouTube channel. You can also check out our friends at Thrive Fantasy, the number one place for player prop bets in the hockey world. And, of course, if you use the link or use code Tookie, they will match your initial deposit up to the first $100 redos. So make sure to check out our friends at Thrive Fantasy. Now, gentlemen... We have uh, another interesting show, as I alluded towards with Mr. Sim for the win. Bunch of random hockey topics to discuss real quick that we'd normally kind of sprinkle into our day-by-day. Day, and then we will end this show with talking about the Olympics. Because the Olympic teams uh, have been uh, unveiled. And I think it's interesting to kind of talk about what we are expecting. Again, it's not exactly what we were all hoping for. There is no NHL involvement, but the rosters are quite interesting. Before that, though, we have to have a nice little follow-up to the discussion, of course, that Endo and I got to have on Tuesday without sin, and that was in regards to the incident in the ECHL, of course, involving one Jacob Panetta and Jordan Subban. Now, for those of you that uh, missed that last show or have been uh, completely uh, avoiding social media over the past week again it is as simple as this uh heated a moment to say the least an incident uh with jacob panetta either flexing or uh you know performing a racial taunt jordan suban certainly took it that way panetta was suspended by the echl released from his team the jacksonville iceman and ever since then we've kind of been dealing with the fallout and even over the past couple of days there has been a little bit more fallout. Now, Sin, I don't know. Do you want to share your thoughts on this since you did it on Tuesday, or do you want to wait until I kind of give the recap as to what's happened in the past couple of days? Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's difficult to say. I mean, I've kind of kept up with it a little bit, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, hard, it's hard to really kind of... I, I, I don't even... It's so hard to get into just because there's so much kind of moving pieces to it. Right. And it's very disheartening just watching kind of the reactions from it. Either, you know, people dead set in something that did happen or something didn't happen. And it just sucks that it's even like to me, it just sucks that it's even like uh, possible like that. You know, like we were at the point now where something like that is just. Yeah, it could be could be racist like that's 
it just sucks that we're at that point in society and and in the sport, essentially. So the ECHL announced that Panetta has been suspended for the rest of the season. He can apply for a reduced suspension after March 17th and upon completing a, quote, learning experience conducted in conjunction with the NHL's Player Inclusion Committee. Now, this was mentioned by ECHL Commissioner Ryan Creelan, I do believe. Insensitive actions and gestures, regardless of intent, cannot be tolerated in our game. We all need to grow from this incident and remain steadfast to further educating and advancing our commitment to diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion throughout our league. The, The key word there... Or the key part of that is regardless of intent. The ECHL, nor has anybody necessarily come forward with a 100% slam dunk this was racist, indisputable, in terms of a gesture. Which is the hang-up, I would say, for a lot of people. Now you've had... Uh, The Jacksonville Icemen, of course, have released statements. Uh, We have seen the uh, president of the Icemen um, clarify that he felt as though the commentator and the referee, or at least I think it was the in-arena announcer and the referee, uh, had initially announced the penalty as being for a racial, uh, racist, a racist gesture. Excuse me. Uh, And again, the president of the Icemen is now saying he believes that was a mistake. You also have another one of those moments where people were saying, okay, but if it wasn't a racist incident, why did his teammates not stand up for him? You then had on Twitter today, uh, player Derek Lodemeyer of the Jacksonville Icemen released kind of a statement for all of the members of the team And I will leave it up to you guys to read the whole thing because there's a little bit there, but he says this, During overtime, an on-ice scrum occurred between our teammate Jacob Panetta and Jordan Subban. The incident escalated as players of the Stingrays joined in on the altercation. We knew penalties were going to be given out for their actions, and we wanted the power play to try and win the game. In the heat of the moment, we didn't realize why the altercation had escalated as it did, and it's why we refrained from jumping in on the ice for Panetta. The perception in which uh, Jacob's action were taken by some were not the way in which they were intended to be. So you have his teammates as well saying, well, the, we didn't just stand there because we thought he deserved to get his ass kicked. This, I, I, I think with this entire situation, we kind of have to leave it where Endo and I did on Tuesday, and I'm happy with how that segment came out. I am very much leaning towards now Jacob Panetta, unfortunately, yes, through his own actions, put himself into a pretty brutal situation, but it's certainly believable that he didn't do anything with racial intent, and as Endo and I uh, said on Tuesday's show, at the end of the day, too, I mean, number one, again, it's tough not to feel sorry for Panetta in this way. Because it does look like this was a misunderstanding. It leads to the other part of the conversation where we all need to think really hard about why a player in Jordan Subban's situation would view it that way. And I think that's the best way to leave it. But unfortunately now, I mean, we haven't heard from the Subans at all in response to any of this. I don't know if if we necessarily deserve to hear from them. Um, you know, Jacob Panetta himself did comment on the ruling and again, uh, kept the same kind of stance that he has had. Um, and I'll read a quote from it as the league determined, although my tough guy gesture made towards Jordan Subban was not racist in intent. I acknowledge it was perceived as such. So I, I look at the way Jacob Panetta is handling this. I think he's handling it as best he can for the fact that as Endo and I mentioned, his name is forever dragged through the mud because of this. Um, this is just a really, really shitty situation, I think is the best way to sum it up for everybody involved. Yeah, essentially we're just at an impasse. And it's everything's kind of come out the way it is. It's 
you know, with the team statements being made and, and what he said, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely, it's not going to move forward really any at, at all. It's just going to turn into people who, who saw one thing and people, you know, who saw another what, and what he said he, his intents were, and then what Jordan Subban took it as. So I'll just kind of reiterate my earlier point that it's actually, you know, the, the saddest thing for me is that we, a lot of people, himself included, are used to that sort of thing being racist um, or to have racist intentions. And that I think we still need to take a look at. I don't want people to be like, oh, see, it's bull crap. And then nothing, you know, nothing's racist now. Like, I, I feel like that's such a we're such a kind of all or nothing society where yeah. you look at that one thing and be like, oh, see, it's fine. There's no racism in hockey, but it's like, well, there obviously is because look how many people li- like that was just expected that that was the intent. And there's a reason for that beyond people wanting to be offended or whatever that you think, you know? Yeah. There's no uh, room for and the, the words escaping me right now, but like you said, it's all or nothing. There's no room for those fine details about yeah. something. It is just take it at face value or, or nothing at all. Endo, do you have anything else to add before we move on to uh, a variety of other different topics before we get into talking about the Olympics? Yeah, um, it's it's unfortunate. Um, I'm glad that there's clearly he it, it, there's more evidence to show that he didn't mean to be racist. He didn't mean it in any way to have that be intent his intentions. And like we've said, it it's totally fine and understandable why the Subans reacted the same way that they did. Especially what happened less than like a week ago with the ruling about Imama. Yeah. And that being fresh people's minds. And then you have um, the incident from before uh, in the Ukrainian Hockey League. And that being there as well. It's still fresh in people's minds about mm-hmm. this stuff. Also forgetting that Brandon Manning called. Use a slur towards Boku Mama, And just it's. It's going to be annoying. It's going to be hard because people are going to use this case and they're going to use the Bubba Wallace case and stuff like that as like, oh, see, there, there's no racism. There's none of this. It's not real. It's just the I think I've seen the turns being like a, a conglomerate thing created by the higher ups and like big, big segregation. Basically, is saying like, oh, this is this. It's like it's not real. It doesn't happen. The only reason why it happens is because we're being told to it by these corporations I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, that's like less than two months ago. I was on the ice at a rental game and someone called me the N word. And someone called me a monkey. And I'm pretty sure a big corporation didn't tell him to do that. No, his sentiment and his feelings of frustration, because I was pretty fucking good in that. God made him use a certain word that he probably shouldn't have used in general. But he feels comfortable in that way. And that's wrong. Tell, Tell me that guy's a big conglomerate. He's not. He's an individual. He made a f- stupid act, and he paid the repercussions there. And that that's basically it. People are being held accountable. And it's if there's one thing I want to say about this is that the amount of people that united together to, to fight this is staggering. Regardless of the end result, what it was or what it could have been, the amount of people who basically stood up and said, we're not having this in the game whatsoever, speaks volumes to growing the game and making hockey for everybody because hockey isn't for everybody it's it's got a long fucking way to go yeah. massively long way to go it's about taking the steps today and now to move up and i think one of the biggest steps that has to be done especially after all this is for the nhl to meet with the hockey diversity alliance hands down after this stuff right here because you've had rulings done by the ahl You've had rulings done by the ECHL, but nothing done by the NHL themselves. And they're in a hot pool of water with other situations and other acts of stuff with officials and on-ice officials, office officials, and stuff like that. They need to get this together. And the thing, the basically, like, Batman has been in the hot seat before, but now it's, after everything he does and everything keeps coming to light, it's just getting hotter. And I don't know how much longer it's going to take until someone's going to say, yeah, we got we to gotta clean house. I don't know what else is going to happen. Unfortunately for him, uh, the NFL or the NBA isn't going to do anything first because it's not as big of a problem as it is exactly. here. And he usually just follows the leader. 
mm-hmm. I think we can all kind of agree that our biggest concern out of this now is just knowing how politicized everything is that you know, as mentioned, that there are going to be people who double down, there are people who are going to be using this and almost trying to champion Jacob Panetta as a reason why, oh, this is why we got to overcome cancel culture, and it just get, yep. leads into that whole headache-inducing conversation. This entire situation sucks. It really does. And there is a long way to go in terms of of growth, not only from the perspective of, of Jordan Subban at this point and why someone in his situation would feel the way he does and the growth that needs to be made there, but yes, at the same time, this does show just the society we live in right now, and I agree, it's not perfect in that sense that someone like Jacob Panetta can get called a racist in the moment, I understand why Jordan Subban thought so, but in the moment, Jacob Panetta gets labeled racist, and again, he's going to be stuck with that. He is absolutely going to be stuck with that, and that's not fair either. Hockey has a long way to go, and a lot of different avenues, I think, is the best way to sum that up. On a more positive note, and again, didn't get to do the day-by-day today, so we're just going to kind of fire off some of the more interesting things going on. Uh, in the hockey world right now, and I, I feel no better way in terms of a positive thing to talk about the update that came out for NHL 22 yesterday on Thursday. Uh, the big thing that they added, of course, as they had advertised previously after acquiring the double IHF license, uh, is the women's uh, teams have been added into the game. You can finally play as the likes of Murray Philippe Land, Hillary Knight, so on and so forth in the game, which I think is the coolest goddamn thing in the world. Um, and something yeah, that rad. I've been, I mean, again, like we had this a decade ago with Haley Wickenheiser, Angela Ruggiero, and a couple of people, but that's it. And it's been so long since. And, you know, I get it as someone who. You know, is you know a fairly consistent FIFA player as well. Like I get it, where some people are just like, oh, okay, they're going to add this in and do nothing with it. And yeah, maybe they will. Um, you know, they had done that with FIFA, where they added in the women's teams, and they are just kind of there for most people. But for other people, I presume they pay attention to that feature quite a bit. I look at NBA. You know, NBA 2K and what they have, and I think that's what a lot of people are hoping that this is the start of. Granted, I do think there is uh, a little bit of, you know, cooperation that needs to be had from the PHF and the PWHPA in terms of figuring out their issues and making sure that whatever league is there is the top league. Because, as I mentioned with 2K, they have the WNBA directly in their video game. Now, the NBA and the WNBA are essentially under the same roof, and we don't have that with the PHF and the NHL right now, but... Hopefully, this is the start of leading to what could be the involvement of the PHF in the EA NHL series. Implementation of it, much like every feature, we'll wait and see. But still, what this what this could mean? Hopefully, this is the the first step from a video game perspective towards this uh, very very positive change. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the boys agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Like I, I love that feature of of and of two K, like you said, and like you could just do like full on like franchise mode, and like it's it's great. Like it's and that really kind of you know representation matters, man. Like a lot. Like I, some people like seemingly don't get it, but like it really does. Despite you know if you don't like it, if you're not gonna play it, dude, someone out there is like really there mm. really is. It's not just there to piss you off. I promise. Question why you're being no, pissed be a, off? No, be anyway. a pro is there to piss off every <laughs> hut player. Facts. Yeah, um, so, yeah, like it's. I think it's great, and like you said, it's stepping stones. I don't have a whole, whole lot of faith that EA is going to be the one to kind of, you know, uh, more kind of add in all those features that 2K has. But it's like I said, it's a stepping stone and representation, whether it gets picked up in some other way, and you know, leads to other bigger things like Tugi was talking about. Then I'm all for it. Yeah, definitely agree. Uh, the only way to improve and to get better is to add stuff like this. Uh, granted, for some reason, I can't access it and play now, but I think it's like, can you only access it in like the only mode itself? Or? Yeah, I think it's a, it's available it's in play now. I was, it's a licensing thing, so you can't like move the players I hear. Yeah. That's, yeah, similar to the World Junior rosters, yeah. you're not allowed to move the players 
in terms of editing rosters. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to use them, you do have to go within the mode. They are available in play now. I, I looked at them earlier. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's a licensing thing, and I know some people are disappointed in that. Absolutely. But yeah, another thing like to if, add to on top. Yeah. To me, that's the same thing, though. And sorry to cut you off, Endo. To me, that's the same thing as why when you go to create a team or you're in EASHL and there's certain logos unavailable, certain teams don't want their their license, their property, to be edited and shown in a different form, and that's their right to do so. Even though, from the you know the player's perspective, it's it's a limiting. But they have the rights to do it that way. Yeah. For, on that notion, shout out to the ECHL for allowing us to fully edit their logos and all that. Because all the ECHL teams are mm. all fully customizable. And the NHL teams and that. It'd be great to have AHL, the other ones, but, you know, licensing it costs money. And we, we all know budget cuts. And the one thing I do want to know, too, is this wasn't announced. I think I touched on this last episode. But with, it, with the addition of the Women's League, with the Women's and the Men's, EA added like 68 total women faces into the game. And then they added for the guys. Now it's like 68 women's faces. And now, now it's like 258 when there was like 250. So they're clearly adding more stuff in there. Um, I didn't even... Yeah, you didn't even know that because they didn't no. announce it. No. Like that's that's huge. And now you mm. can finally have like avatars of like ethnic people or black people or people of color. And it actually looks like people of color instead of just someone who's just, just black faced on top. That's one of the things that I've, I've noticed personally um, from that. Just going on a little tangent there, but you know, diversity it's working also for everyone. Make hockey for everybody. Yeah. And okay, respect whammon. Whammon. Respect whammon. <laughs> respect whammon. Look at it. Very, very happy with that addition. Yeah. We'll see again kind of what EA does with it. Speaking of additions, and again, no rhyme or reason in the order of these, but it's just what I had written down. Uh, the All-Star Game's coming up, of course, for the NHL. People are getting into the swing of things in the spirit. And uh, they announced uh, some of the entertainment for the All-Star Game, which will include Machine Gun Kelly. And boomers are losing their minds. <laughs> yeah, all the people who said, I'm not going to watch the All-Star Game are really upset with the musical entertainment that will be at the All-Star Game. Now they're especially not going to watch the All-Star <laughs> Game, though. Look at Twitter and Reddit. They're especially I'm not, gonna watch it not twice going then. to watch it. It's ridiculous. I don't know why the, people... The guy is like six... He has like 16 million listeners on Spotify. Yeah, like, I'm, I wasn't like, going to watch it, so I don't care. And who cares? Like, that's a good marketing... He's... Have you seen the headlines? He's all over. It's just him and Megan Fox constantly. Like, this is honestly a good viral marketing tactic by the NHL. And again, like you said, mm-hmm. he's also got the music and the, the already, is- you know, base of followers, you know, present there. It it makes sense from every single standpoint, except for all the old heads who get mad at anything that isn't how it was in the fucking 80s. Yeah. What was it? What was it? Monkey wanted to get Kiss, and I'm like, Gene Simmons is like 72 years old. Kiss was horrible yeah. anyway. I don't. I don't understand, dude. Kiss was awful in their time. Why do people want they, them now? They also <laughs> performed at the All Star Game. They also performed on WCW Nitro. <laughs> See, that makes sense. <laughs> They're essentially Hick Rock, man, just with face paint. <laughs> God. No, but on now, the real, yeah, on the real. Um, a lot of people forget that. Uh, not to interrupt, but. Uh, MGK right. Machine Gun Kelly, he changed his style completely from like rap and like trap rap and all that to working with Travis Barker of Blink 182 to making like pop rock, punk rock, like pop punk kind of stuff like that. And it's not bad. There's like a few songs that. that have been. Yeah, there's <laughs> yeah. Like f- that, well, honestly, that's the thing, right? Like he has been, like he has been a part, like flat out music wise, uh, as someone who pays attention to uh, a lot of different music channels that discusses. You know, a variety of different things, whether it be, um, you know, I'll shout out someone like Todd in the Shadows who yep. pays more attention to the to the pop side of things, but also, um, you know, punk rock NBA. I'll pay attention to, to Finn McKenty as well. The bottom line is, like, the, the reemergence of pop punk has really been a thing over the past couple of, or really like the past year or two. It's like yeah. MGK dared to pick up a guitar after Imagine Dragons and Nickelback nearly killed it. Yeah, like, it's just, but God. I have a him, library just, full of songs I've written now that I can record and release. I am so excited. <laughs> I, 
I think it's just for him, he is still carrying around the fact that Eminem eviscerated him on a diss track. Yeah. And that's how most people still view MGK yeah. at this point, unfortunately for him. It's hey. unfortunate. So, so hey. Honestly, it's it's an honor to be fucking destroyed by Eminem. Like that's what I'm saying. Me? Yeah. <laughs> like the the man like popped champagne. Like when he when he was like he did like this video of like him listening to the track and he popped champagne and he was like shaking it around and stuff like that. Like, he didn't even give it. He didn't care. It helps his image. Now, how do you think he got 16 million? Obviously, yeah, like, putting out yeah. he's a decent artist, but he's been around for a while. I remember like 10 years ago, people were talking about him. Like I played an yeah. iPhone app with him. They were like all about. He's been him. around a long time. Yeah, they were flagging, like. All of them are from the Midwest and shit, I guess. I don't know if that's where he's from, but that was, like, the majority of people who I knew who listened to him were all from, like, the Midwest, and I just assumed he was brash rap. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're from... I think he's from, like, I think he's from, like the Cleveland area or something yeah. like there, that. There but... you fucking go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. I will say, though, in, in terms of the Eminem thing, like, as a white rapper, is there anybody you'd rather, you know, be on the receiving end of a diss track from than Eminem? I don't think so. Logic. I mean, that guy maybe. doesn't diss anyone, dude. That guy does. He's too nice. He's too. Yeah, yeah he's too nice. But like, that guy does. If you get dissed words. by logic, if you get dissed by a nice guy, do you like? Is it like even better? Because like, you broke the mold. You're the first. No, because no one no. cares about their disability. Like, it'll just go into the radar. Like, if they're not in that, like, if they're not in that tier of rappers to let out diss tracks, like that's just been Eminem's entire thing. This whole time, he's always mm. beefing with someone. Like, it doesn't matter. It was yeah. Busta Rhymes. It was Ja Rule. It was... The insane clown posse, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Dude, he had, a like, whole, too. he had a whole track that was basically... I mean, it was That's not awesome. a track. It was a skit. But essentially, it was making their voices... And, uh, doing yeah, uh, Performing an, yeah, a sexual cause... act on Ken Kniff, which is another character he created. It was... Yeah. Oh my anyway, God. I thought you were gonna <laughs> like, say it's awfully hot coffee pot, <laughs> and I was like, that was oh like the God. most, that was the weirdest like cipher. He's just like, ah, I'ma stop, and he's just like, the camera just pans to a bunch of <laughs> bunch of guys in the back. Oh man. Eminem ethered MGK, and that's what most people remember. But I don't know. I, I like seeing people upset. Just wait. It's yeah. Oftentimes. If you see something in reference to a musical act and people are super upset on Twitter, that probably means the company that's associated with the musical act is making the right choice. Yeah. I will say that. Uh, in terms of, uh, by the way, a couple seconds ago, I had accidentally started a, a little bit of audio because I didn't realize it was audio, not an article. So that'll bring us to our next little talking point here. And boys, I'm going to go out of order on the sheet and down to the coyotes because what I had clicked on. Uh, was in reference to the Coyotes, who are again back in the news cycle in regards to their arena, where Craig Morgan put out the tweet saying they are in advanced discussions with Arizona State University to use their new multi-purpose arena as a temporary home for potentially the next three, maybe even four years, while they try to secure an arena deal. The reason why people are freaking out is that arena holds 5,000 people. The clip that I accidentally started to play was from Elliot Friedman discussing the fact that the Coyotes' capacity for next year could be as low as 3200 with them needing to pay 15 to $20 million in, uh, in, in potential uh, renovations. Now, obviously, people have been dunking on the Coyotes. It brings up the why not just move them shit. Brad Marchand was dunking on the Coyotes, which I don't necessarily approve of. Like, like the Coyotes' <laughs> SB Nation team account was getting dunked on and trolled by Brad Marchand basically saying you don't have any fans Oof. that's my only problem I don't like that he went with... after the SB Nation because that's like kind of fan run journalism yeah oh, so that is my issue with this is so many people make it almost too personal about the fans where again please YouTube Phoenix Coyotes 2012 playoffs all goals there is about an hour long video where you will see every single home game they played packed and that crowd was electric that was a decade ago this june that team has been dog shit the entire time fans show up when the team is good i said it before on the podcast when buffalo sabers fans don't show up it's for a it's for a noble cause to send a message to ownership that they demand the team be better but when the coyotes do it i'll move the team Shit, even when the Sens do it, 
it's kind of a mix of both between move the team and not. It's always with these non-traditional hockey markets that when they're dog shit, oh, they they need to be moved. But when it's a Buffalo, when it's an Ottawa, it's, it's a noble cause. When Leafs fans throw jerseys on the ice, it's a noble cause. I just think that's it's it's a bit too personal in regards to fans. Look, I agree. The NHL has bent over backwards to try and make this Arizona thing work. I do not get why people are still surprised by this, though. Like, again, that market for Arizona. Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the U.S. by population. Yes, one of the cities they could move it to, Houston, is fourth in the U.S., only behind New York, L.A., and Chicago. Wait, what? Phoenix is fifth in the U.S. in population? Yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix, yeah, Phoenix is the fifth biggest city in the U.S. I fucking no. What? Oh, yeah, I, I have to look this up because... I mean, like, it's it's the area of Phoenix. It's it's huge. It's absolutely huge in the surrounding 1. area. 1.6 million in yeah. Phoenix. Yeah, Philadelphia is over the 1.6 marks as well, but uh, Phoenix is actually ahead of them. Uh, well, Sin looks that up. Like, Sorry. Just... I, I, it's, it's not because I don't believe you. It's, it's well, I mean, it is, but it's because <laughs> it's it's not that I'm questioning you. It's just that, like, how, the, how, like, how do I not know this? Like, you, it's not something yeah. you think of. Is as a as one of the most populous states. Okay, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> states Sin's <God> research. <laughs> so I promise you, like, deeply. Oh my gosh! Up. Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> it's not even in here. That's so weird. Oh, oh it's out of order. You suck. Oh my god! Yeah, it's right there, and then Dallas is behind it. Boston's smaller. See, I don't. I, that's crazy to me. When you think of Boston, you think of this massive metropolitan kind of city. Yeah. But yeah. Phoenix. No, Boston Boston uh, is close in population to freaking El Paso, Texas, for God's sakes. Like Fort Worth, Texas has like almost 300,000 wow. more people than Boston in terms of population. It's nuts. It's nuts. Now, granted, you could talk about the surrounding areas, and Boston's kind of similar to Toronto, where, of course, you have so many people in the close suburbs. and We have 2.93 kind of mil people in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. This wasn't meant to be geography <laughs> and population yeah, density of cities, but Sorry. again, <laughs> to the point, I I get why people are so upset about the coyotes and think they should be moved. I get it. But again, much like our good friend Deke Slayer will do on Twitter, and I will continue to, to fight for the cause for Coyotes fans. The coyotes have a good fan base. The fact that anybody still shows up is a testament to the fact that they have a good fan base. But yes, at the same time, we get it. They probably could have been moved by now, and Gary has bent over backwards for the sake of the team. I just think the relentless dunking on the uh, on, on the fan base is just totally unnecessary. It is. Especially because the fans have no... They have no control over this. They just want to watch hockey, man. They just want to cheer for their team. But I, I like what Deke said. It's like the more you, you know, he's just kind of resilient to it. And it just makes his, like, fan base that much stronger. Because eventually they will turn the corner and people will be forced to shut the fuck up. Like, and, yeah. I mean, If they get this stadium. Yeah. And this rebuild goes as planned where they have a bajillion picks over the next so couple of years. many it better. Like, it has to, right? I mean, again, three first round picks, five seconds this year, and then they're gonna get Austin Matthews as a free agent. So Shut it's up. just gonna be mad. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> hey, Jamie, look that up real quick. Is Austin Matthews gonna be in there? All right, sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so Austin Matthews take horse paste. Um, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Neil Young still on Spotify. Uh, <laughs> Who wrote that? Yeah, I. Are you I sure? Don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I get the idea for the Coyotes that them playing in a 5,000-seat arena, which is smaller than some junior league teams or even ECHL teams, is absurd. I get it. I don't I don't disagree with the fact that people are like, man, just move them to Quebec City. Like, you, you could. The Habs are playing in an empty stadium. I, well, I mean, there's reasons for of that. Of course, but, but I mean, at this, in the same vein, it's like... <laughs> How full? How full are your stands, Toronto? Yeah, like, 
I, I, I understand it's a different situation, but at the same time, it's like, why are we so concerned about how many people they could stuff into seats and how many people can they fill into an arena when we're still technically, you know, we're still in, we're going through the pandemic throws still like, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I mean, how many people are going to be like, yeah, I'm going to go to a hockey game, potentially get this to watch the intentionally scorched earth tanking mm -hmm. Arizona Coyotes, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So I don't know, man. I'm just I'm real sick of that. I agree. There's been a lot of trouble with the team. I agree. Five thousand seater isn't the best look in the world, but the people be like, oh, they couldn't even fill the five thousand seater. Shut the fuck up. Like it's just you're not funny. You're not. It's low hanging man. fruit, and people just love picking that shit and acting like they're. Cool. Fair enough. Um, for the St. Louis Blues, two things. Uh, there was the stat line for Billy Huso, who, again, used to be my goalie to be like, yeah, this guy shouldn't be an NHLer. Um, dating back to April 10th of 2021 on home ice, he is 9-0 and in St. Louis <laughs> with a 951 save percentage. This month in January so far, he is 6-0 and with a straight one goal against average and a 965 save percentage. To the point where people are actively debating whether or not if he's the guy over Jordan Binning. Yes, make him the guy, go on a playoff run, sign him to six mil, and fucking enjoy. What happens after that? Please, do it again. Do it again, oh St. Louis. God. We've seen we've seen this story before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it all too well. Martin Jones did that. Bennington did uh -huh. that. Billy Hughes. Do you know? Like, goalies are weird. Jordan, do you know Jordan Bennington's contract? It's like, isn't it, wasn't it like six by six or like seven by six or something ridiculous? I know. Do you have a guess? I know he's making at least six mil. How much? How much? Is making? Stopped. Yeah. What is Jordan Bennington's contract right now? I think it's like a six by like six. So it's like a six. You are both correct. It yeah. is six by six. He currently has a uh, no trade clause. Uh, this is the first year, by the way, of that six by six extension. Uh, he is currently rocking a 901 save percentage in 23 games. <laughs> and in the playoffs, since they won the cup over the last two years, he has an 851 in five games and an 899 in four. No, that's really good. Yeah, that's that's great. Elite baby. All I heard was he was elite. He's does does he look worried? Does he look scared? Does he <laughs> look concerned or whatever the on. fuck that bullshit was? We keep talking. He's gonna come at yeah, us and start nervous. swinging his stick at his head at our heads. <laughs> well, let's talk about somebody on his team that's uh, accomplished something recently. Good uh, that being Tyler Bozak, he's gonna play his eight hundredth eight hundredth NHL game tonight as an undrafted player. Uh, I do believe there have been like twenty, only twenty some odd people to do that. Since 1969. Nice. nice. Damn it. Um, <laughs> God, <that's too laughs> beat slow. you to it. <laughs> oh, God. But it, it's interesting, right? Because you have certain names. Obviously, uh, you know, I could list off some of the you know guys who are just over 800. But obviously, too, you've had a couple of people to break 1,000. I don't know if Tyler Bozak will be doing that. Um, but, oh, God, he's well, got to be. He's got an adorable family. family. But, yeah, father time. Yeah, he's got to be like 34, yeah. 35, yeah. 35 years old. Yeah, and with his place, yeah, probably got a couple more years, maybe. Hmm. But, I mean, obviously, like when you think of undrafted players, you think of Martin St. Louis, um, you know, the, the most games played for an undrafted player, uh, Adam Oates, over 1,300 with wow. 1,400 points. Oates yeah. was undrafted? Yep. Yeah, they That blows my that. mind because he's in the top. Like, he was in the top for, like, assists or points or something. I remember when Joe Thornton passed him up. I didn't. I, yeah, he has uh, 1,079 career assists really? as Adam Oates. That, that's wow. Which is nuts. And then, obviously, yeah. guys like Peter Stashney, Dino Cicerelli. I mentioned St. Louis. For the Leafs, Borja Salming was undrafted. I mean, it's it's been an interesting list. And, I mean, like, active NHLers right now, in terms of all-time points, he's third, only behind Mark Giordano and Artemi Panarin. In all time points, really? Yeah. He's uh just ahead of Matt Zuccarello. He won't be for too much longer, I presume. <laughs> oh, wasn't Bozak supposed to be like the one C for a while? Did, was it was he on the Leafs at one point? Oh Bozak was the Bozak one C in Toronto yeah, for that's a while. right, that's right. Okay, because, yeah. Uh, I was trade like trade from Anaheim. I was trying to I was trying to picture where his career was coming, like, wait a sec. He, he, yeah, I was like, Yeah, wasn't he in Toronto? Anyway. 
He was always in, he was in blue for a long time. Yeah, he's he's a big fan of the color. And he won he, big big fan. He won a cup of <laughs> but, one of the blues. Oh, okay, we don't have to talk about that. Um, <laughs> Both of you hate that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hey, congrats to Tyler Bozak. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to talking about an incident with the Buffalo Sabres, uh, especially from when they played Ottawa. Shout out to Tyler Ennis, affectionately known in every NHL franchise mode as Tennis. Uh, he scored a, a hat trick on, on on that particular night. But something else happened in that game between the Sens and the Sabres. Aaron Dell, goaltender for the Sabres, decided to essentially body check Drake Batherson. Batherson uh, is going to be out long term. He has been replaced in the All-Star game. He was going to be the Sens representative. He has been replaced by Brady Kachuk. Not the first time Aaron Dell has done this. He once wiped out Mark Stone. That was clean, though. Uh, Suspended for three games. And I'm honestly surprised it's not more because, my God, the precedent for that with the goalie stepping out in front of a player who's about to go down below the goal line and how dangerous that is. We saw how dangerous it is with how bad, you know, how badly injured Batherson yeah. is after the incident. Uh, scumbag move by Aaron Dell, and to be honest, like, you, you have to view it as, like, uh, essentially, like, you've lost your temper. And this is somebody... Where I don't know if you can afford to lose your temper, buddy. Like he's, un- he's, he's undrafted. A- he's got a career horrible save percentage. Yeah, and I would like to formally retract my previous laughing at Mark Stone for getting crushed by Eric Dell or Aaron Dell because yeah, that result to Batherson could have probably happened to Mark Stone. It was a slightly different situation, but it's way too similar to you know ignore anymore. So yeah, that was a. Uh, Pretty brutal on Aaron Dell, and I don't know what the hell he was thinking. His uh, numbers in the NHL aren't uh, pretty as as of as of recent times, and uh, apparently the Sabers don't have a, an active goalie uh, available to them right now, yeah, <laughs> because of injuries and now suspensions and and COVID as well. So uh, Aaron Dell really really putting the team first with that move. That it's just it's a dirty ass play, yeah. It was a dirty, dirty play, and uh, three games, in my opinion, was the bare minimum. Yeah, I another incident where people were initially I pissed. Just in case I get the call, you know, needing a goalie, you know, yeah, to a, for a <laughs> and just got the gear bag ready. Bug. I was ready to go. I mean, your opinion of this end was someone who plays goalie. Granted, obviously, on a you know an interesting level at the very <laughs> least, like. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know how else, don't know how else yeah. to phrase it because it's like okay, you know, we can't even call it like semi-professional. It's, but at the end of the day, architect you, in here for a second. You're trash, Endo. You play in a trash league. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the way I phrase it is, I'm a self-employed hockey goalie. <laughs> if that that's the best way to put it. Um. Fair. But in terms of like, if I would qualify that be a proper play, uh, one no. No, don't don't do that. Like you can be physical, but like don't kill a guy into the boards like that. Um, you're in mm. your crease. Um, you really came out of your crease technically to hit the guy. Yeah. So that's a bad on you right there. Um, I, I'm I'm fine with goalies like being like you know physical in a way, but like that that kind of thing. No, like just absolutely thrashing the guy over and getting him injured. No, no boy, no. Uh, when he played the puck earlier this week on Mark Stone, that was that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, what did he do earlier like, this the, week? Was it this week? Was it last week? No, it was a couple seasons ago that the Mark oh, Stone okay. thing happened. Oh yeah, so yeah. Not- the thing against Mark Stone was when he was on the Sharks. He just he it was yeah. pretty much yeah. the same when Mark Stone came in. He took a bit of a tighter route, did Mark Stone than Batherson did. Dell went way more, in my opinion, way more out of his way to hit Batherson this time around. Yeah. That being said. Seeing that result, yeah. Um, there was a there was a hit earlier this week. I can't remember who it was. Was it Dell? I'm not sure who it was. One goal, I think, it was on the Sabers, where he came up to play the puck and he just absolutely like flattened the guy, and it got like two minutes for like uh for like I have no clue. In- I didn't see any. I don't pay attention to Sabers games, so I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, you're, you're uh, lying, Endo. No, no, Pixer didn't happen. <laughs> There was another incident where people were outraged enough to where uh, one of the color commentators, just outright commentators for uh, Altitude Sports, was calling for uh, Taylor Hall's head because Taylor, uh, Taylor Hall dared to hit Nathan McKinnon. Completely clean hit. Yeah. 
but a super weird outcome where McKinnon's hands come up and he essentially smashes himself in his face with his own stick. Facial fracture and a concussion for McKinnon. He's going to miss at least three games and maybe the All-Star game. Uh, miss- it's worth noting the Bruins had a lead in that game and blew it in overtime. Kale McCarr scored the winner for the Avs' uh, 17th straight win at home. Longest streak in franchise history. I I don't know how anybody could have watched that replay of the hit and been like, oh, yeah, no, Nathan, Mc- Nathan McKinnon got headshotted there. Like It was rather obvious right out of the gates that it was just a really unfortunate incident, and it sucks for McKinnon, who has had trouble. He's just had some horrible luck this season trying to stay healthy, and it sucks. He's one of the best you know, stars of the, the current generation, and to see him not be able to stay healthy for one reason or another, fluke injury after fluke injury, blows. But, yeah, some people uh, got a little bit a uh, little bit sensitive that someone dared try to hit Nathan McKinnon. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm going to try to find the exact... The exact tweet here, unfortunately for me, as uh, some people might know if you follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Tuki24. I tweet a lot, so it can be difficult to scroll back through so while you look and uh, um, and find the comment. But uh, I do believe all I had to do was just type out LOL in big letters, but he might have also deleted the tweet, so that's, that's interesting. But regardless... Yeah, call up nope, there it is. All right, so this was, uh, I'm going to shout him out. Shout out Kyle Keefe TV, Altitude TV studio anchor. Uh, for the record, I don't care if the hit on McKinnon was clean or dirty, a minor or a major. You crushed a superstar, cut him, and he's out. You're still out there skating. You should absolutely expect a response either tonight <laughs> or down the road. Fucking Kyle was on one. Jesus. <laughs> That's a little weird. Fuck. Like, I, I understand the... Uh... The sentiment. I understand homerism, stars, but yeah. But fuck, man. Whew. I understand being a homer. I'm not saying Jack Edwards hasn't done stuff that might be very, very similar, but God damn. <laughs> down the road, Taylor. We'll see you down the road. So I All looked right. up the hit I, I was talking about. Uh, it was I think mm-hmm. it was on the 14th. It was in the Preds face of Sabres. And Aaron Dell hit Eli Tolvanen. Tolvanen, he just absolutely crushed them on the boards. Like this is earlier this week, I think, like or, like two weeks ago. He just Fair absolutely enough. just comes, goes to play the puck, and just absolutely just rams him. Gets two minutes for uh, interference. So basically, he didn't get called out for that earlier, and then did it again and actually hurt somebody. Yeah. D O P S. <laughs> So consistent. It's, yeah, uh, I take back everything I said about the goalies being hit and everything like that. Most of it was just I'm just joking around, but I don't. I don't. Your your job is to play the puck and do that. And situations like that is kind of scary. And it's kind of like, what do I do? You play the puck. Defend yourself, but don't be an instigator. And respect Whammon. Respect Whammon. <laughs> <I think that's laughs> the main problem with that whole McKinnon thing, and still really mm-hmm. the main problem in in. A lot of hockey right now is people don't understand that you can get a concussion from a non-dirty hit. And then people are saying, like, oh, my God, he's injured. It's a concussion. Clearly, it was dirty. Of course, it was dirty. He has a concussion. He made head contact. It's like, yeah, man, it's not how physics works. He got head Mm contact. Like, you can get a concussion just from whiplash alone. I think we've mentioned this on the show before. I just want to reiterate that because that's really important uh, to know and something that, you know, should – should kind of be be, ad- be addressed as well and, and learned about in hockey is that, yes, even if you throw like a, a perfect clean hit like that was, there's still the risk of injury. That's just the nature and how physics sort of work there. So, yeah, we're, we're, I think we're we're past the point of, uh, at least we should be, past the point of the old school Bertuzzi revenges and the Avalanche Red Wings rivalries. I don't like to see... Oh, this guy's got a target on his back and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess I understand it, but also it was a clean hit. You don't have to. Didn't you try? Didn't you pay him back and almost cost yourself the game by cross checking him 20,000 times? Right. You got your revenge when you won the game. Yeah. That's the most important thing. You won the game. Congratulations. Yeah. The Anaheim Ducks played the Montreal Canadiens last night. Trevor Zegers scored a Michigan. Now, if you score a Michigan, 
against Montreal, and there's no fans in the stands, did you really score in Michigan? <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Trevor Zegers is sick, and I'm so glad he's at least going to be in the breakaway uh, skills comp. Mm-hmm. You know, for the All Star weekend, should outright be there. Of course, um, I still think. And Endo and I had that conversation. Like the, the NHL writers put out a, their poll saying the Zegers wasn't first. I still think Moritz Sider right now is is my pick uh, for the Calder. But there's no denying that Trevor Zegers is insane, and obviously it's a it's a phenomenal goal. But it's against Montreal. Let's calm down. Yeah, but does it really count? I mean. Yes. Montreal is basically playing age. He it made it look count. effortless, dude. Yeah, like, he did. He made it look fucking effortless. He did it in stride, which is yeah. nuts. Here's the thing. That's we like... need to not allow ourselves to kind of become desensitized to like some of the great things people are able to do. Mm-hmm. Like I saw this McKinnon shootout goal or sorry, the, the McDavid shootout goal against UC Soros. I'm like, oh, we have yeah. pretty sick mitts. And I'm like, wait a second, dude. He just did something that really no one else can this league can do. It's. There's so much skill, and it's, like, really starting to come out. And my goodness, like, that Zegers thing was just insane. Like, yeah. he, it, he really did it almost, like, so nonchalantly, and that was gorgeous. And I, I, I'm i telling you, NHL, market this guy, please. This is the – this guy, really, I don't care about – I don't care how, how good McDavid is. Zegers is, needs to be the new face of the NHL. Mm-hmm. One of them at the very least. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with that point completely, right? The idea of just not getting desensitized yeah. to, you know, uh, something like the Michigan, which is almost becoming commonplace at this point. But at the same time, it is still, it's absurd. Mm-hmm. It's absurd yeah. how, again, just the, 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 the balls how on skill it. goals <laughs> have evolved, yeah. like, already. Rookie. Pulling that shit off. That's he has a insane. Michigan That's assist insane. and a Michigan goal. What's next? Mm. <laughs> like Michigan like, from center ice. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, like he comes over the blue line, picks the fuck up, and just yeah, <laughs> he, <laughs> he just Puts fucking clutches it, it. Like he just l- 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 lacrosse handles it down the ice. <laughs> oh man, I saw the hottest take from I'm assuming a Habs fan on Twitter, like. Oh, so I guess we need to just put in a rule like basketball, really, like a traveling rule where you I saw can't. That too. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> you n- no fun having mother. Mm, come on, the dude. Tortellini effect. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, the, jo- the John Jonathan Tortellini. <laughs> oh man, he yeah. God, I've run out of uh, gifs to use of John Tortorella being angry for when Zegris does stuff because he just keeps doing these amazing things. I'm like. I'd love to keep right. the meme up, but there's only so many angry John Tortorella gifs. You'd think there'd be more, but... Uh. I want the John Tortorella Award for Goal of the Year. <laughs> yes! <laughs> or the Creative Goal of the Year, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. God but yeah, like we, like we said, it just... It's, it's, like, to the point of normalcy, and I don't know, like, if, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's like, oh, cool. You know, we, like, everything's happening so fast. And, um, fuck, where am I going with this? I don't know. I'm going to shut up. I don't know. I never know know. where you're going with some of these points. That's my favorite thing about this show. Yeah. I I just (laughs) Just take us on journey sometimes. I get criticized for it. And then I'm just like, great. Thanks. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, here, we'll segue. We'll segue. There you go. Uh, The LA Kings played a game. Imagine that. They're a hockey team. Quentin Byfield, though, scored his first career NHL goal on one hell of a wrist shot. Like, my God, the snap on that damn thing was insane. Uh, very, very happy for Quentin Byfield. Um, there was there was somebody who pointed out that he uh, he had essentially, like, posed afterwards in the locker room. And, God, I'm trying to find it because there was this, this, incredible, uh, this incredible Photoshop work on Byfield that I unfortunately can't find at this point. But people are hyped, as they should be. Quentin Byfield sick. There's a reason why he was drafted uh, in the top two, and rightfully so. And I am very excited to see what he does next. And, of course, <laughs> the L.A. Kings are just stacked. Like, it's crazy, the prospect Sharks pool are screwed. that they have. Sharks oh, well, dude, California-wise, like, you can't compare the Sharks prospect pool to the Ducks and the Kings. It's, it's yeah. totally different. Carlson's injured now. Let's please tank. Let's please. From crying. Well, that's what we were saying on the last show when you weren't here. Yeah, is that Carlson's out until March. Yep. You guys are 100% tanking. He was 1,000%. Yeah, he, he was dated. Well, here's the thing. If we're tanking, why the f- 
hell is is Ryan Merkley now on the taxi squad instead of playing? It is infuriating uh, to me that this team is still trying to win now. It is fucking infuriating, dude. You're not selling tickets. You're not winning games consistently. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm very frustrated. I'm very worried because I feel like Doug is a, is a, can be a good GM. I just feel like he's in an unwinnable situation. I think I feel like he's put himself in an unwinnable situation. He's just going to keep doubling down, and he, like he doesn't want to accept the reality of what's happening, and that scares me because then we're going to lose out probably on his son, who's been an excellent drafter the two years he's been with the organization. You know it's serious when Sin's womp sound <laughs> comes out. My what? <laughs> you know the things of Mario that are up in the air and they just come crashing down? <laughs> Did I? I no. What? <laughs> I'm gonna have to isolate the clip. We got a TikTok. Oh God! What did I do? It's, it's, it was funny as hell. Trust me. Believe okay. me. You'll find out at the end of the show. It's great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that more reminds me of Minecraft when you get take some damage. <clears throat> oh God! I thought that was more of an oof. Maybe I'm thinking of maybe I'm thinking of Roblox. Uh, the Sharks currently. <laughs> For as much as we were saying, they're kind of in the playoff picture. Uh, they are tied in games with Calgary, who currently or tied in points with Calgary, who currently occupy the second wild card spot. But the Flames have four games at hand. So, uh, yeah, and the Flames are also coming off of a game where they put up 62 shots against the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, the first team to do so since the Boston Bruins. Uh, put up 73 shots, <laughs> an NHL record against the Quebec Nordiques in March of 1991. <laughs> Lol. So, yeah, no, the Sharks need to, at, at this Brain point, hurdle. I think the writing is kind of on the wall. Like, they are in almost a, a very similar situation to the Oilers, with the exception of the Oilers kind of have to go for it. You guys don't have Connor McDavid and Leon oh, Dreisaitl. Traitor. Um, yeah, you know, I'd be like Vancouver. Like, you know, you hear the rumors around Vancouver. Like, they are the same amount of games played as the Sharks, three points back. What's the conversation surrounding Vancouver? Oh, are they going to trade JT Miller? So, you know, it, it just kind of shows that that different approach. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see what they do, certainly. Um, sooner the better, perhaps. I mean, I don't know, you know, in terms of navigating a Tomas Hurdle trade, but, uh, if you have a hurdle jersey, wear it while you can, everybody, before it becomes uh, an antique. We will talk about, uh, first and foremost, just saw, by the way, that uh, 22 minutes ago, Jonathan Taves is uh, in concussion protocol. He's going to be out for the Blackhawks, so he's going to be out for a little bit, um, as much as we have questioned Jonathan Taves um, in certain aspects of... Uh, him, uh, don't like to see that anybody's hurt. Unfortunately, you know there there are two big talking points coming up. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave those two for last. Um, I want to talk about the Leafs really quickly. Endo, how about Jack Campbell's shootout sass against Ricard Raquel? I never saw the shootout. Did you see try to have the Leafs, the Leafs fan talk about the Leafs, and he's dropping the ball. Everybody, the Leafs towards the playoffs. No one cares about Leafs towards the playoffs. Except for the one, it was hilarious though. Yeah, like he I made saw the... it. How, how the hell did you not see it? I saw it. I was, it was high everywhere. shit. Why does he think I could see it? I could barely keep my eyes open. <laughs> what day was it? Was it on Tuesday? One of the days he made the save. It was when they played the Ducks. He made the save against Raquel. Raquel put it back in on the rebound, which obviously doesn't count. And Campbell just shrugged it off. It was hilarious. It was great, and I'm you missed it. Look it up right now. Jeez. Bad Leafs fan. Bad. I don't Not care. even a true Leafs fan. Yeah. Unbelievable. Outrageous. Um, regardless, the, the point as well that I wanted to bring up, the Leafs are on pace to finish with 116 points this season. They're also on pace to finish third in the Atlantic. Atlantic is stacked. It is. That is. Yeah. That's the new gauntlet. The Atlantic yeah, is I mean, the again, gauntlet. That's insane. As you would uh, suspect, it is the two Florida teams that are ahead of the Leafs, which means the Leafs will have to play, at this rate, Florida or Tampa in round one, which I think is stupid. You're going to have two teams, likely over 100 points, having to play each other in round one. Can we yeah. please bring back the one through eight? 
please. Well, we need this rivalries. Is the dumbest. Oh my god! Like it doesn't even enforce rivalries. And again, like I said, like again, had it been one through eight, you know, maybe we would have gotten Toronto and the New York Islanders, which is certainly more of a rivalry. Maybe we would end up with a Carolina and Boston, which is in and of itself a little bit of a rivalry. Certainly more uh, than Boston playing the Florida Panthers, which division, you know, same division, but is that much of a rivalry? Not really. I mean. God, I hope they change the playoff format, but they won't. <laughs> More than likely, it's their genius, beautiful idea. That would be admitting that they, you know, made a mistake, which <laughs> does not happen. In the Coyotes NHL. for life. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of making mistakes, the Philadelphia Flyers, who have uh, lost 13 games in a row, I do believe is the most recent count. Um... Holy shit, how are they this bad? Brady is the only There's... thing keeping that franchise afloat. Move the team. Where's Where are the calls to move the team? Right? <laughs> they have a worse points percentage on the season than the Ottawa Senators. And are barely, as in, they have an overtime point, or an overtime, yeah, an overtime loss point more than Buffalo. They are essentially on the same point pace as the Buffalo Sabres. I I don't understand. I simply don't. It continues to astonish me just how bad the Flyers are. The Flyers have a goal differential of negative 42. Wow. Only topped by the negative 65 of Montreal and the minus 66 of Arizona. Mm. They have a worse goal differential than the Kraken who we have talked about all season long as having garbage goaltending. They have a worse goal differential than the Buffalo Sabres. Who have no goaltenders. How? <laughs> yeah, Buffalo, by the way, who are going down to their seventh goddamn goaltender potentially on Saturday because Hauser's in COVID protocol, Dell's suspended, and four other goalies are hurt. I can't even tell if they list in the article who the hell the goalie would be. That would have to play. Like, most teams don't have seven goalies signed. So I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Future considerations trade, I can tell you right there. Yeah. Pff, Zach Fucale, come on down to Buffalo. Let's go. Like, that's the name that jumps out to me. So. Uh, as well, the last thing we want to talk about here before we get to our two uh, other bigger topics, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Shout out to Brian Boyle for a between-the-legs goal against Arizona. I saved the same judgment as I did for uh, Trevor Zegers against Montreal. Does it really count? Um, the Penguins signed Jeff Carter to an extension at 3.125 for two years. That's not that bad. No, that's pretty damn good for Jeff Carter. Yes, it's not. Oh, hold on. Oh. He has a no-movement clause for both of those years. He is 37 years old. Was oh, he that old? Oh, my God. I thought he was, like, 35. He turned 37 on January 1st. Um, Why the no-movement clause? Like, that's just is the it the only now. way to... That's, like, the norm. Is it the only way to get the price down? Is he, He'll be like, okay, instead of paying me 4, I pay me 3.1, but assure me that you're not going to trade me? He has 26 points in 37 games, and of course he was a revelation in the uh, playoffs. Five points with four goals in six games for them last year, and a first-round loss. But you're right, that kind of is the standard, and I'm like, how did that become the standard? Yeah. It's weird. Very, very bizarre, and it's weird. Good for Jeff Carter, though, still securing the bag at his advanced age. That brings us to our two other talking points before we talk a little bit about the Olympics and what's going to be coming up. First things first, tonight the New York Rangers raise Henrik Lundqvist's number to the Raptors in Madison Square Garden. Uh, of course, very soon he will be a Hockey Hall of Famer as well. I mean, he's going to be uh, as first ballot as David Ortiz was. Slam dunk, baby. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not surprising. It's, all, it's almost a little bit surprising that they're retiring his number as fast as they are, but obviously it's like, that's screwed. If you're going to do it, why not just do it immediately? And I'm glad you both agree. Yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> hey. Like, we've, we've 
talked about Henrik Lundqvist on this show before. I mean, we don't need to sit here and hype up Henrik Lundqvist. He's he's one of the best goaltenders of all time. Yeah. Carried teams on his back. Is that a no business going as far as they did? The yeah. only problem is that we get to deal with Henrik Lundqvist, Caps legend, for the rest of time. What? Oh, yeah. He got <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about That's that. The only issue. He, he never play played game. a game for them, but still, that will be the meme as Henrik Lundqvist, Caps legend. I mean, and I'm already annoyed by it. Really? I, I don't mind those memes. I find them funny. Like, come on, Matt, like, Hoffman, Sharks legend. Like, <laughs> I love, I, I know, I have, to, I have to point it out. I know, obviously, you meant Mike, but you said Matt Hoffman. I did. I did. I, I, I was like, wait a sec. And I just said, is incredible. Hoffman. Because all I can imagine now is Matt Hoffman. At like an intermission, just with like, like a bunch doing, of shit set up on the ice, <laughs> doing backflips and bar spins on a bike. <laughs> oh, did you ever? Did you ever play the Matt Hoffman video game that was essentially I was just the about rip to off? Yeah. That was those were oh. pretty decent, but I preferred the Dave Muska one. The Dave Mira. Mira, Dave thank Mira, you. Yeah, Muska, Chad, Musk. Jesus, yeah, the Dave Mira ones because it had Sublime and it had mm, rancid the music. It was so. For anyone who doesn't know what we are talking about, back in the good old days when Tony Hawk Pro Skater ruled the world, they thought, how can we get more money out of this? So Matt Hoffman, one of the most famous uh, BMXers of his day, ended up getting his own video games as well, Matt Hoffman's uh, Pro BMX. Oh my and God. they were awesome. As well, Dave Mira ended up, uh, an R.I.P. Dave Mira, he passed away, uh, God, almost six years ago now, that's nuts. Uh, but Dave Mira also got his own video game, so we had Pro BMX, but then we had Dave Mira Freestyle BMX. All of this coming out around the same time, just very similar to, like, when Guitar Hero took over the earth, and it still happens now with certain video games. Like, you have a genre take off, mm -hmm. and then they just beat it to death and pinch every penny out of it until there's nothing left. Hey, you yep. say that. Remember Kelly Slater's Pro, pro Surfer? Uh, oh yes, I God. have that game still. I'm going to plug in my PS2 and play it. I still oh have it. Oh my God, it you're was right. a great That's game. Right. Dude, no you're right. They, made, a, they oh. made the surfing game out of the Tony Hawk formula yeah. too. Oh my God. All of these I had as a kid, by the way. Couldn't Six. get enough of these type of games. Six I world titles. I unlocked the all the characters. Twice. Yeah, well, there's God. there's three waves that you could choose from at each location, by the way. Uh, they're just <laughs> slightly different sized. Seriously. Never the same wave twice. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, that, that was, a, that was a, I, I loved that game, though. I played the shit out of that. I unlocked every single character, and especially that Tiki Man, and then the special location of a... Uh, of that, I forget how to pronounce it. That play one. through on Twitch or YouTube, please. <laughs> I need this. I don't care if I'm the only person watching. <laughs> oh my god! So yes, I still I got a memory card. Till we, <laughs> oh, I can't wait till like we're having a small resurgence of Tony Hawk stuff. But I can't wait we get into uh, the next one, which is probably gonna be like Tony Hawk Existential Nightmare, where it's just like him being like all on a skateboard, and it's just <laughs> freaking out. And the, 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 the that's, well, that's his current ben. life though. Yeah, <laughs> it is every time every day. It's like, hey, I got recognized at the airport for someone thinking I looked like Tony Hawk. Yeah. LOL, am Tony Hawk. <laughs> That's, That's just the a same. cut scene in the game. <laughs> oh, it gets God. <laughs> so in, in terms of Tony Hawk, number one, shout out to the remake that came out almost two years ago now of one and two. That was awesome. But do you guys remember Tony Hawk? Was it Shred? Was Shred the one for the Wii that came with the ride. skateboard that ride. you stand on? Ride. Oh. It was Ride. Okay. Ride, never, yeah. I never played a Wii. One of the biggest, like, busts of a game and of a peripheral of all time. Yeah, it was like, people would then take that board and then, like, actually, like, screw in trucks onto it and just yes. go out to skate with it. It was the best. Oh, my oh, God. Man. What we need is there was a, a hockey stick peripheral for the Wii, right? <laughs> Slapstick. What we need is somebody, <laughs> we need somebody to actually put that, like craft it into a real stick <laughs> and use it. Nasher, there is your million dollar idea yeah. for a YouTube video. I'll oh take a 5% royalty on the ad revenue for that one. 
take the NHL slap shot stick, turn it into a real stick, and use it uh, at, a, at a pickup game or at a league game. Do what you want. That's Million, millions of clicks. That's just millions. a mini stick at that point. It's just <laughs> a mini stick. Yeah. That reminds no, you just, me of you get that heater thing and like plug it into the two two piece stick. Yeah, That's what you yeah. do. You melt it down and plug it into that. Even it better. Even there you go. That. Bar down actually did a video. Shout out to the guys at Bar Down, Corwin and DZ, my favorites. They did a video where they curve like mini sticks. I'm I'm more of a Jesse guy, but thank you. You're Jesse guy. Yeah. Je- Jesse follows me on Twitter, so I'm more of a more of a Jesse guy. <laughs> what a guy. They they. <laughs> You had like the little thin plastic mini sticks and they, they had like a blow dry, not blow dry, but like a heat gun. And like they heated it up and gave them curves. And you see Jesse with like two sticks just going through the entire game. Oh, it's man. It's beautiful. Boys, we've killed enough time. Let's talk about it. The elephant in the room. The Edmonton Oilers have signed a Vander Kane. It, oh. We knew it was coming for weeks and weeks and weeks. Now here is the issue. And this I don't understand, and I have a feeling it's just going to be swept under the rug a little bit. There will not be, more than likely, any further discipline to Evander Kane from the NHL. Which means they had to wait to sign him until he was cleared. The reason, I believe, why the Sharks were able to sign him is because there were actions worthy of extra discipline. So if the league found that there was nothing worthy of further discipline, which allows the Oilers to sign him, in theory, the Sharks should not have been allowed to cut him and be scot-free of his contract like they are. Interesting. One of these things is not like the others. Interesting, though. Uh, I don't know if... uh, Look, man, he's a good player. He was always going to get signed. Like, he's he's, he's not going to... Oh, yeah, we knew that. Yeah, but just the gonna... idea that the Sharks are, like, completely let off the hook here now. Well, they're yeah, – I don't know. Like, I'm trying to figure out which 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 team did the backroom deal. Was it Edmonton or was it San Jose? Could have been both because Edmonton's yeah. like, please, God, we can't afford to give up the assets, but we need a player like this. Yeah, like, here's the thing. I don't know. Edmonton needs gold. And, like, I... No, Evander Kane and win every game 7-6. to six. <laughs> Yeah. Foolproof. Yeah. <laughs> now, Evander Kane going to trade for wasted... Ryan Reeves, baby. Go. There you go. <laughs> Evander Kane wasted no time uh, talking shit. Uh, says he didn't get along with every teammate. Uh, the report that he didn't get along with every teammate in San Jose is false. Says leaks of that narrative came from the dressing room, not from him. And that's not good leadership. So immediately saying the idea that he wasn't liked in the locker room was coming from people that hated him. And then I saw someone say, oh, so the report that his teammates didn't like him can't be trusted because it came from biased people that didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was the biggest word salad quote, and that's what he does so well, uh-huh. is he says enough for stupid people to be like, oh, oh your second chance. And anyone with a goddamn brain or has experienced the shit that he brings Good luck. All I'm going to say is Oilers, he's going to kill it for you. He is. This 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 last half of the season you're going to love Evander Kane. And if you sign him long term, just wait. It's going to happen again because he hasn't learned shit because he hasn't faced the music. You're talented enough at something, you'll get as many chances as oh, yeah. is required until you absolutely blow it. Mm-hmm. And then even after you absolutely blow it, you get more chances. Well, you've you've because you get more chances if you're chances. still good enough. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 he's, I keep... he's recovered himself. He's he's redeemed himself. Yeah, I, I keep seeing people say, "Oh, he deserves a second chance." How many goddamn second? You, did you did people out here have shitty parents, man? Like, how many chances did you get as a kid, man? Like, I like. Bleh. Sometimes I didn't even get a second chance. I'm, I'm, I'm apparently oh, the sound effect one. guy today. <laughs> I'm happy about it. I had one. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, it I is think, an I idea. Think, I, I had a feeling your mom was pretty, uh, we were just listening to her talk and not let you <laughs> bail out of that snow oh, shovel. Oh, like, I can you imagine, no, dude. I, you have no idea. None of you have no idea the trauma I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> I knew. I, I would get my first and middle name called and I'd be like, fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, you hear that middle name. You see, that's what she gave me a weird up. ass first name, like endurance. <laughs> so that way, like you know, it's like it's time. Oh, it's like, got this emphasis on that. Yeah. 
Whereas for Sin and I, we're, we're basic bitches with our first name, so you really got to throw in that middle name yeah. for the emphasis to let us know that we've crossed the line. And then the one time I still continued to push after hearing the middle name again was the time my mom came into my room and threw my uh, TV to the other side of said room. Oh, shit. Uh, and at that point... At that point, oh yeah, no, this was, I deserved it too. I don't even remember what I said, but she walked in, my TV was on a stand, and she went, whoosh, and just <laughs> oh, sent dude. it to the other side of the room, and just stared at me, and then left. She didn't say a word. Uh, you're, you're <laughs> lucky. The amount of, like, computers and laptops that I've unfortunately had to go through uh, due to tempers uh, is not great. Is, is not great. We'll get into a different So, Evander came. <laughs> <laughs> like, we just went on a tangent about our moms. Uh, in terms of chances, sin uh, again, he was a uh, he was an Atlanta Thrasher slash Winnipeg Jet. He was a Buffalo Saber. He was a San Jose Shark. He is now an Edmonton Oiler. Um, yeah, that's more than that's more than a, a second chance. Yeah, to your point. Here's the thing: like when he came over here, I'm like, all right, we'll see if he turns over a new lease. It was fine, fine at first. Like again, it was fine at first, and that's kind of how it always goes for those types of people is that they're able to be good for enough time. Eventually the shit comes out. Like it, that's just happened. Mm -hmm. That's their true nature. And people like, it's crazy. Like everyone's the same people who say, Oh, you can't, you know, don't judge based on first impressions or, or whatever. Like they're, they're, this, they're, they're the, always the people who get fooled by the snake oil sales salesman. And that's essentially what Evander Kane is. And I'm sorry. Like, Oh, he was never found guilty, or that means his wife was lying. First of all, no, it doesn't. That that's not how a court of law works. Second of all, how many times has he been acute? Like people don't continuously face those types of allegations and be you know found to be a uh, you know guilty or whatever of other stuff like of other crap. Evander things. Kane is not important enough. For people to want to continually try to drag them down I, and get yeah, money from it's him. It's crazy. Money that he probably doesn't have from gambling. That's Yeah, that's like, exactly it. Like, like, you can look at somebody like Michael Jackson, and it's understandable as to why there was lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, because that is one of the richest men on the planet with a, you know an easy target to be like, okay, it, shit, shit didn't happen, but they'll pay me to shut me the hell up. Who the hell is going to do that for Evander Kane? Like, Evander Kane, oh, man, like, yeah, no, in Atlanta, I just had my haters in the locker room, like Dustin Bufflin. Oh, yeah, no, in San Jose, I just had my haters in the locker room. Like, I don't think Dustin Bufflin looked at Evander Kane and was like, yeah, I need, I need to drag that guy down just because I don't like him. Pretty sure there's merit to people wanting to uh, speak out a, about Evander Kane and yeah. uh, what type of teammate he is. And honestly, he's the only one who's been throwing stones. The Sharks throughout the offseason have all just basically said, no, we haven't paid attention. They're just trying to be as neutral as possible because they want to be done with it. And he's still there mm. like, ah, oh, you know, terrible leadership over there. And that to me is just, you know, speaks of spite. And he's trying to get he's trying to dictate the narrative. That's what that is. And that usually indicates that you're not as secure as, you know, in your position as you are. But he's done doing a pretty good job of pretending. And, you know, Oilers fans are eating it up because they're desperate. I literally saw one person say, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm ready to sell my soul for a, uh, you know, to see the second round. I'm like, you kind of are. And, and I know you probably said that <laughs> ironically, but in so many ways you are because you're throwing morality out the window to win some fucking hockey games. Go, go hang out with Chicago. It's a broken locker room and your solution is Vander Kane. We'll see how that works out. With that, uh, let's move on. Our final little talking point today, we wanted to talk about the Olympics and the rosters that have been announced. Uh, Group A is where I want to start off. It is Canada, China, Germany, and the United States. Now, if this was NHL teams, we know who's advancing, but Germany, again, made the gold medal game against the Olympic athletes of Russia yeah. in 2018. Now, we'll start off with Canada. Uh, in goal, Devin Levi of the uh, now, of course, of the Buffalo Sabers, who is I don't know if he's their guy, like the projected starter, but he has been insane for Northeastern. Uh, this guy has a 948 save percentage in 24 games in the NCAA. That is how many assists? Disgusting. How many assists, though? <laughs> <laughs> uh, behind them, Eddie Pascale, formerly of the uh, Atlanta Thrashers, Winnipeg Jets, and Matt Tompkins, who I believe has been in the Chicago Blackhawks uh, minor league system with Rockford. I don't think he's ever been signed. Um, again, like in terms of the options, I mean, you could sit there and name a thousand different options. I'm intrigued, at least, by what Devin Levi 
uh, could bring yeah. if he gets the chance. But Eddie Pascal has been playing in the KHL. He's got a little bit more experience. So I'm intrigued to see where Canada goes in goal because I think if it's not Devin Levi, there's going to be a lot of calls for it to be Devin Levi because of the hype around him and what he did at the World Juniors. Yeah. Uh, Endo Mills. Or since No, go for it. <laughs> Either or. Oh, yeah. Definitely. He's doing crazy numbers uh, for sure right now. Uh, like part of me is like, do you put Pasquale in so that way, uh, Pascal, you put him in because he has experience with playing overseas and all that. Cause Levi's still technically under playing as a, uh, NCAA prospect. So he's playing with Northeastern, yeah. uh, Tompkins is playing in the SHL. So you have two goalies who actually have that experience playing in that like style of game. Yeah. Cause there's going to be like international rules and all that. Uh, it makes you, it makes you wonder what they're going to end up doing. Honestly. Did Levi not do World I'm, Juniors? Hmm? He did, yeah. Oh, yeah, World Juniors, but it's it's different than saying playing with guys who are. It's, it's a different age. Yeah, age. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I yeah. get. Yeah, and there could. I was actually thinking of him being the guy the Buffalo Sabers are gonna have to call up on, but because he's already announced a national team, they're screwed because they could have just signed him out of NCAA. But there goes him playing for Northeastern. I don't think you can when you're committed, can you? Uh, there's always a way. <laughs> There's always a way. Life, Trust life me. just uh, just finds a way. Jack Lafontaine uh, was uh, committed uh, to his school, and then he ended up playing for the Canes. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay. Uh, on defense for Canada, uh, former NHL journeyman Mark Barbario, <laughs> former Shark Jason Demers, Dallas Star, uh, former former Portland Pirate Brandon Gormley. Let's go, uh, Alex Grant, Maxime Nero. Owen Power, Matt Robinson, and Tyler Watherspoon. He used to be a, okay. uh, a member of the Calgary Flames. Yes, I used to, I don't know, for some reason I'd always grab him in a franchise mode in like NHL 13 or 14 or something because he would turn out to be okay. <laughs> that is the summary of these Olympics. I know. Oh, yeah, that guy from that old <laughs> I NHL. Know, I know. It's cra- I was looking up and down. I'm like, ah, Corbin Knight. He was supposed to be pretty sick for a while. <laughs> hmm. So obviously on defense, the names that stick out, for me at least, uh, Jason Demers is the real veteran, uh, the most experienced at the NHL level, and then obviously Owen Power as well, uh, along with Devin Levi, a Sabres prospect as well, who is uh, in the NCAA and uh, tearing shit up. Number one overall pick. You could talk about the hype. I mean, oh, 6'6", 214, but again, has 26 points in 24 games in the NCAA this year for a stacked uh, University of Michigan squad. I am very excited because he was looking very good at the World Juniors before it got canceled. Yeah. Good yeah. for Buffalo. Is that, and it's, it's really cool to see them, uh, you know, on, on the same Have team. prospects? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they've always had prospects, but I feel like they're doing it a bit better now where it's like they're not taking the Oilers route where they're going all in on Jack Eichel, who is, I'm sorry, as great as he is, not, still not in the same universe as McDavid. They're kind of trying to build through the aggregate now and that's better honestly that's always gonna in my opinion do better than trying to rely on one two guys fair enough and at forward for canada daniel carr uh bounced around a little bit adam cracknell remember the blues and a couple other teams former hab david de harney uh former bruin amongst other teams landon ferraro joshua hosang that's my boy on the team uh, the previously aforementioned Corbin Knight, Minnesota Wild prospect Jack McBain, uh, Mason McTavish of the Anaheim Ducks, Eric O'Dell, who I think was with Winnipeg back in the day, Eric Stahl, don't need to explain Eric Stahl, uh, Ben Street, Adam Tambellini, Jordan Wheel, and Daniel Winnick. I think Ben Street was on the Sharks for a brief amount of Could He bounced wrong. around a little bit there, too. Yeah. I can I can look that up, but I, I, I recognize Ben Street as primarily being, I think he played for, God, he played for a lot of teams. Uh, yeah, I know, I know the Detroit. name is super familiar, and I just, he might not have been. Let's the see, start. played for Calgary, okay. Colorado, Detroit, Anaheim, and New Jersey. <sighs> Damn, maybe it was Anaheim. There you go. But honestly, I mean, I don't hate this, like, right? Like, you have a bunch of guys who are borderline NHLers. The younger guys like McTavish, I'm excited for. And then the guys like, you know, Eric Stahl that we haven't seen play had that little bit of a tryout or at least the the PTO with the Iowa Wild. And I think for a lot of these guys, a good showcase here could see them get another shot at the NHL level, if not this year, certainly in the next. Yeah, and 
I think I mentioned, I don't know if you brought it up again, but it, before we even start recording, I'm like, there's a 19 year age gap here. It's kind of nuts. Like Eric Stahl born in 1984, McTavish born in 2003. Kind of, kind of cool though. Outrageous. <laughs> Like, we are old enough, of course, to remember Eric Stahl being on the cover of an NHL. Uh-huh. That was in, what, 2008? Yep. yep. And uh, Mason McTavish was five. <laughs> Technically four yeah. when that game dropped. That's insanity. Um, I, I don't I don't mind this for Canada. I, I, I rate this team. I like the mix of NHL experience that they have in some of the younger guys as well. It would be shocking if they don't make it out of Group A. Yeah. You have the Chinese roster. Goaltenders, um, Peng Fei Han, and apologies for any pronunciations, uh, Canadian by birth, Paris O'Brien, and former Bruins uh, backup, Jeremy Smith, who I would presume has to be the starter. Um, Paris O'Brien, of course, a, a member of the Kunlun Red Star team. Most of these people are. Um, I do believe, actually, Paris O'Brien uh, could be uh, of Chinese descent. I, don't quote me on that one. But uh, regardless, obviously, as we've talked about on the show, you're going to see a mix of American and Canadians that are brought over onto this team. Uh, I didn't mind Jeremy Smith. Uh, he wasn't terrible. He was someone who was doing okay, especially at the AHL level, and then just said, I'm going over to the KHL. Uh you can't really judge his save percentage of an 898 for Kunlun because they are a bad, They're bad very team. Bad. <laughs> yeah. So. They're like the worst team in, that, in the KHL by like a large margin. Like I'm actually going to look huge. up the. Uh, let's look up the KHL standings here. It's uh, quick and easy enough. Kunlun Red Star, 939. 9 and 39 on the season with 25 points. The next lowest point total is. God, yeah, they have 25 points. The next lowest is 35, so there's a team that has six more wins than them. DNM Moriga has nine. Yeah. That's problematic. Well, at least Their defense. Life. Jake Chelios, son of Chris. Uh, Zimeng Chen, uh, you know, Chinese-born player. Jason Fram, uh, you know, Canadian-born. Dennis Osipov, who's Russian. Ty Schultz, a Canadian, Ryan Spruill, who once upon a time, I believe, was a first round yes, or maybe at least a third round yeah. pick of the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, Rinan Yan, Chinese national, Zach Yuen of Canadian and Chinese uh, descent, and Peng Fei Shang. So when your most notable defenseman by name value is Jake Chelios. Yeah. Holy hell. <laughs> And then the forwards, because look, there's not too much we can say. Like it's it's rough. They have Parker Fu, who is still affiliated with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks, and his brother Spencer. Uh, a couple of different you know Chinese players by birth, of course. They have uh, American Corey Kane, Luke Lockhart's a Canadian, Ethan Warrick, former Portland Pirate, he's Canadian. Tyler Wong's Canadian, and then arguably the most notable forward at the NHL level is former Nashville Predator Brandon Yip. This team, do they win a game? I say no. They'd be hard pressed to. It's uh, yeah. they they could surprise people, but it's just you don't you haven't heard of anyone. I'm I mean really, uh, I, I'm 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 excited to kind of see how the Chinese nationals uh, kind of stack up. I I just we haven't really seen much coming out of China in the way of hockey. This is going to help grow that and to to a big mm-hmm. extent. And I'm kind of hoping they do win a game because of that. I'd like to see it grow faster. That I agree with. Like I, I appreciate what this is, an attempt to grow the game. Unfortunately, at the same time, you have to hope that it's being. Uh, and let's be honest, when it comes to China, they're good at framing things in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, let's hope that they can frame this as a big success, even though there's a chance they're going to get absolutely demolished on the ice. Yeah. Okay. So I took a quick look at the roster run up for this team. Uh, yeah. So it looks like one, two. I'm looking at the the Kulin Red Star team performance of this season. So far, it looks like Rudy Ying, uh, Zudong Ziang, uh, and Chen. No, only two Chinese nationalists on this have points. Rudy oh Rudy Ying God. has a goal, and Zudong Ying has an assist. That's twenty. Oh, that's, that's twenty so- points played for Rudy for Rudy Ying, one goal. Four games played for Yudong Yang, and that's... 20, 20 games. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's, that's that funny. is so much worse than I would have thought. You would have thought at least a couple of the, the Chinese national players would have some production in the KHL. Oh, they're going to throw these poor guys to the wolves, aren't they? They are not going to be ready. Dude, a guy like Daniel Winnick is going to shred. He's going to look like Mario Lemieux. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I feel bad oh, for that. No. Yeah, it's bad. And a lot of these guys, too, for the Chinese team, like, they're younger players, too. Like, it's going to be cool for them just to represent their, their nation at the Olympics. But, oh, man, they are going to get yeah. just destroyed. Yeah, I'm a little of, worried, like, too, about some of the people just going to use it as, like, a... Uh, a kind of a platform to uh, politically grandstand about how much they don't like China's government and stuff. Oh, that's it's gonna already be happened. Because it's like the kids, the kids there, yeah, like they don't, here's the thing, government's all, like they have their issues and shit and some of them outright suck, but people are people, all right? And like these kids are kids and they're playing sport, like yeah, we gotta separate that. Well, in good <sighs> news, Peng Fai Han has um, 299 goals against average and a 925 save percentage. Damn. Yeah. Maybe Jeremy Smith won't be the starter. Yeah. <laughs> Over not. one game. Oh, my God. Who's going to get goalied by China, the U.S. or Canada? <laughs> Who's going to get goalied? I hope both of them. I hope <laughs> I hope Peng Fang comes out and just absolutely turns into God mode. Because, again, we're seeing Villa Huso. <laughs> right? We need Jeremy, there you Smith, go. Jeremy Smith has a 404 goals against and an 898 yeah. percentage in 25 games. But he wears warrior gear, um, so you know what? Respect to him for wearing the warrior G6s. He's, like, demoing them out to test them if they're good or not um, as someone who wears warrior gear. I mean, you um, might as well. If you're going to get shelled every game and give up uh, or face <laughs> yeah. a thousand shots, you might as well be the one to test the equipment, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so the hard. German roster. We'll move on. Uh, in goal, members of the uh, the German league, Danny Austenbergen, Felix Bruckman, and Matthias Niederberger, all of whom have continually played over in Germany. Uh, on defense, uh, I believe former Shark, Conrad Abelschauser? What? I think. May maybe not. I, don't I could have sworn. Whatsoever. He was drafted by the Sharks. Sixth oh, round in 2010. Oh, the roster nerd strikes again, baby. But did Woo. he ever play in the NHL? No. Uh, no, but he played for the Worcester Sharks, and I saw him in person. That's why I know this. There you go. Uh, okay. <laughs> also on defense, Dominic Bittner, Marcel Brandt, Corbinian Holzer, Leafs, oh, and Capital Ducks player. legend. Yeah. Ducks, no. Uh, Jonas Muller, Moritz Muller, Marco Novak, and Fabio Wagner. So on defense, the only real notable name there for anybody you know that pays attention to North America is Corbinian Holzer. Um, which is a little bit problematic, but obviously, too, it's one of those things, you know, we could look up those uh, particular numbers, and actually Elite Prospects does have uh, club stats up. And, I mean, in goal, uh, I mentioned Niederberger. He has a 931 save percentage uh, for Berlin this season, and Bruckman from Mannheim has a 922. So by German standards, they have some phenomenal goaltenders. They brought on Danny Austenberg, and I think more is just kind of the the veteran uh, on defense, Adbel Schauser, 20 points in 35 games, 20 points for Novak. So, I mean, by the standards of the German League, they do have point producers yeah. uh, on the blue line as well. And when it comes to the forwards, uh, Leanne Bergman, or Leanne Bergman, who was with the Sharks recently. I uh, don't know if he ever played, but he was definitely with their minor league yeah, system. Yeah, he played uh, um, a couple games. Yeah, they have Yassine Eliz, which is... Another name I recognize, I think he had some NHL ties, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. Yeah, he played for Stockton. He played four games in the AHL. God, I hate how I recognize names. <laughs> Patrick Hager, um, Dominic Cahoon, obviously a, a fairly notable NHL name. He's playing in Switzerland this year. Uh, Nico Kramer, Tom Kuhnhockel, another former NHL name. Uh, Stefan Loibel, Marcel Nobles. Yeah. Leo Preferdo, Daniel Pieta, Matthias Piakta, Tobias Reeder, Freddie Tiffles, and David Wolf. So there's a good amount of people throughout this lineup that have had experience on the North American side of things. I believe as well there are a decent amount of guys who would have played in the prior Olympics. And I'm looking at two guys forward-wise, like, like, uh, like I said, Cahoon stands out in Kuhnhockel. Uh, Nobles and Preferdo. Uh, both play for Berlin, both have over 40 points and are over a point per game uh, in that league. So I don't hate Germany's chance of no. potentially making a run again. I really don't. 
it's pretty good. Uh, I miss the days when Marcel Gotch was still able to be on the legend Marcel Gotch. And Jochen Hecht. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I mean, God. they could... They could do a bit of something. I, I could, I'm looking at, you know, I went ahead a bit to look at the U.S. US roster. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. yeah, if they don't play up the par, man, I could see Germany taking a game off U.S., maybe Canada. Mm. Anything can happen. I mean, it's not likely, but yeah, poor group. And for a. the U.S. then, unless we have anything else to add about nope. Germany, because we, we'll, we'll try to speed this up yeah. a little bit. Um, in goal for the U.S., uh, NCAA goaltender for the Chicago Blackhawks, Drew Camesso. Who was also on the uh, World Junior team? Strauss Mann. What a name. Strauss Mann. And Pat Nagel, who is a uh, AHL and ECHL veteran. Uh, on defense, Brian Cooper, Brock Faber of the LA Kings, Drew Hellison of the Colorado Avalanche, former Bruin Stephen Camphor, uh, former Islander and Cap Aaron Ness. Uh, for the Lightning, prospect Nicholas Perbix, Ottawa's Jake Sanderson, and another former Bruin in David Warsawski. So pretty similar to the Canadian side of things. I, I like the mix of younger guys, but also guys with NHL experience. Forward-wise, Nicholas Abersesi of the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Kenny Agostino, formerly of the Maple Leafs. Uh, Matty Beneers of the Seattle Kraken. Brendan Brisson of the Vegas Golden Knights. Noah Cates of the Flyers. Sean Farrell of the Montreal Canadiens. Sam Henches of the Minnesota Wild. Uh, Matthew Knees, I believe it is, of the Leafs. Uh, Mark McLaughlin. Never heard of you, Mark. I'm sorry. Ben Myers, former Portland Pirate, Andy Mele, Brian O'Neill, Nick Shore, former Leaf, and Nathan Smith of the Winnipeg Jets. So there are a lot of young players, prospect level guys for this U.S. team, which makes me think that the top two in this division could easily be Canada and Germany. Yeah. Yeah. You have guys. Like Brian O'Neill and Kenny Agostino, good AHLers, also good point producers at the KHL level. Nathan Smith, a good producer as well at the NCAA level, 38 points in 26 games. But there is uh, there's some experience, and then there's some inexperience. Although I will shout out to Strauss Mann, who's playing in Sweden, has a 927 save percentage for Skelleftia. So I look at this U.S. roster, and I'm like, it could be good. But I also know what Germany did last time, and I'm like, okay, this is uh, this is a little bit concerning. But at least it'll get some of those younger American prospects some good ice time. Hopefully they go Team North America and shock the world. That's what I'm saying. To take down the, the big bad Russians. Okay. We need to combine our forces. Um, Group B, you have Czechia, Denmark, Russia. And Switzerland, I don't think we'll have too much to add about any of these particular teams. Obviously, the Czechs, I'd say, are relatively uh, affected by not having uh, the American uh, or the uh, the players in the NHL, at least on the, the North American side of things. Uh, in goal, Patrick Bartosak, who I think was with the Kings once upon a time. Roman Will, Simon Hrubik on defense. Uh, Jakob Jarebek, I think, was with the Habs somewhat recently. Uh, Thomas Kondratik's played in the uh, AHL. I know that for sure. Vrocek Mozik, I think, was with the Devils. David Skelechni- or yeah, Skelenica was with the Habs at one point. No major defenseman on this roster with like a, a North American impact. Forward-wise, though, it does feature the likes of Michael Froelich, David Krejci, mm-hmm. Vladimir Sabotka. So I'm excited for that reason. I'm going to get to watch David Krejci play hockey again. David, please come back. For the love of God, after the Olympics, come back, baby. Come home. They have a line um, for Leek, uh, God. <laughs> Krejci and Sabutka. <laughs> it's another interesting team where, again, in goal, they got goalies with good save percentages in the KHL. They have some notable names. And then, you know, uh, the rest of that roster could surprise. Like, out of Group B... You would obviously think, like, okay, just based off of name value, Russia and, uh, you know, Chechia, but I don't know, in looking at the other rosters. But I'd say they have a pretty good chance of uh, making it to the to the quarterfinals at the very least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Denmark. Um, it's cool they're in the tournament. <laughs> uh, they got Mad Shogard in goal. Uh, Sen's prospect, he's huge. That's it. He's huge. NH- he's 6'7". Yeah. He's huge. In NHL 06, Team Denmark in that game used to have an insane goalie. He was like 94 overall, and I never knew if it was like a mistake or what, but their entire, they had like an 80 overall as their top player and the rest of the team, but then like their goaltender was like out of this world good. 
Weird. This is random international teams from back in the day. On defense, their most notable guy in terms of name value has to be uh, Philip Larson, who previously played with the Canucks, if I'm not mistaken. What about Bjorkstrand? <sighs> well, here's the thing. Forward-wise, an elite prospects, I actually just noticed they have uh, NHLers still involved, so I'm not sure oh. who their roster's going to have. If the NHL had played and they'd have Bjorkstrand and Nick Ellers, oh, that would yeah, be pretty sorry. sweet. I was... I, they will not. Yeah, I just yeah. noticed that too. I thought Elite Prospects had the fully updated thing. It doesn't. Well, Blick, uh, which means is an AHL, I think. So. Their most notable player uh, players will likely be Mikhail Bodker and Franz Nielsen, which. Lol. Wait, Franz bad, Nielsen? But, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Franz well, Nielsen might, might just make that roster. Let's go. Which, uh, you know, again, some NHL experience there. The names that stand out. The Russians. Uh, Interesting as well here. I mean, again, it's made up of like every single player is currently playing in the KHL. Uh, the most notable names from the uh, you know the NHL fans' perspective: uh, Nikita Nesterov on defense, formerly with the Lightning. Uh, certain defender by the name of Slava Voinov. What is on this? Oh yeah, he he won gold with them uh, four years ago. He's on yeah. this team again too. Um, as well for the forwards, no Datsuk this time. Yeah. Uh, but they do have uh, former uh, NHL Artem Anisimov, Mikhail Grigorenko, Nikita Gusev, and uh, Vegas Golden Knights legend Vadim Shipachov. That's going to be a real tough team to beat. Shipachov's still great, by the way. He has 68, uh, 67 points in 48 games. They got games the fetus the on the team. Year. They have the fetus. <laughs> Artem Minulin. <laughs> God, it's um. <laughs> please explain the reference for people. Who yeah, don't it. I was uh, on a stream, and it was his picture in like NHL 17. He looked like a he had the weirdest like baby face, and so yeah, that guy. I am Sean Avery, or whoever the hell that guy was. That uh, noted troll all throughout many sects of the internet just started calling him the mm. fetus and spamming baby rage, and so yeah, Artyom Minderlin is the fetus. <laughs> Can we talk go. about how Ivan Fedotov is six foot fucking eight? Is he, I missed He's that. six foot eight. <laughs> oh my god! Their goalie. He has a nine nineteen save percentage for uh, CSKA. Call him up, Philadelphia. Six eight goalie for the Flyers. I have a Fedotov. Seventh round pick. Oh my god! Jesus. Bring him that's over. A, the next. Uh, the next Shesterkin. That's the. That's a Bring man. Him on. That is a man. Six eight two zero oh, three. <laughs> And then Switzerland, for the hell of it, again, in terms of uh, former NHL names, Red Obera, uh, they have as an option between the pipes. They also have uh, Red Wings prospect Joram Van Pottelberg. On defense, uh, highlighted by Rafael Diaz, who bounced around a little bit. Sharks legend Mirko Mueller. Let's go. And former Preds great Yannick Weber, amongst other teams. Up front, uh, Sven Andragetto, the legend. Uh, Christoph Bersky, Gaten Haas. Fabrice Herzog, who's with the Leafs, Dennis Malgin, uh, Gregory Hoffman, who left the Blue Jackets so he could play, as well as spend time with his family. So I look at this this Group B, and i got to be honest, it's it's a complete toss-up. I mean, obviously Denmark is the, the team that's very difficult to kind of predict, but this is what I'm happy about. Because you look at Group A. If the, if the U.S. or if the NHL is involved, the U.S. and Canada move on. Mm -hmm. Group B, if the U.S. is involved... It's likely uh, Czechia and Russia. Maybe Switzerland on an outside shot. And then Group C, if the NHL is involved, I mean, odds are it's Finland and Sweden. Maybe Slovakia. Um, but looking at these teams here for Group C with Finland uh, to start things off. Uh, in goal, uh, formerly of the Winnipeg Jets organization, Yuho Okinura, Hari Satari, who played a little bit in the NHL. Uh, their defense, though... Uh, highlighted by Sammy Votnin is the best way to put it. Uh, Vili Poka, still one of the best names in, in history. Yeah. He's on this team. Petteri Lindbaugh, Mikko Lettinen, and up front, Miro Alton. He played for the Leafs for a little bit, didn't he? Pretty sure he did. Valtteri Filpula, Marcus Granlin, uh, I think, again, Oilers legend, Teemu Hartikainen, Bruins legend, Jonas Kempinen, Leo Komarov. Leo. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's just fun to look at these teams to be like, hey, I know that guy. And then, oh, okay, we don't know those guys. But yeah. obviously you expect Finland to be 
to be pretty strong as always. I mean, again, they have guys that get uh, the leading score right now in terms of club play. Nico Ojamaki has 43 points in 48 games in the KHL with 29 goals. Like for all these guys, like you got them playing in Switzerland, Sweden, Finland, the KHL. Like there are people who can get the job done. And Satari has a 926 save percentage for Sabir Novosibirsk, my favorite name in the KHL. So Finland's an interesting one, but then there's the most interesting one, gentlemen. Latvia. Boy. In goal, Kristus Gudlevskis. What? <laughs> the legend <laughs> who almost beat Canada in the 2012 Olympics. Or was it the 2013? No, it was 2012, wasn't it? 2016. Yeah, 2016-2012. God damn. Was it? No, because the, the NHL didn't go in 2016. 2014, 2018 then. 2018. Yeah, God, yeah. that's right. I'm, I'm going too far back. Yeah, it was 2014. I knew 2012 wasn't right. That was the Summer Olympics in, in London, but... The legend Christos Gudlevskis uh, on defense when the most notable name for someone who pays attention to stuff like this is Arters Kolda. That's a problem. And up front, Rodrigo Abols, Rehard and Roberts Bukarts, Bruins legend Kaspar Daugavins. Uh, <laughs> Martin Zikarolov. Oh, boy. No, you know, oh, he was. I'm rooting yeah. for the Latvians. You root for the underdogs, but uh, yeah, no, that's um, that 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 might be a problem. Yeah, that might be a problem. And their highest save percentage for a goalie is Goodlevskis with a 909 in the Slovakian league. Oof. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, rooting for Latvia. Don't like their chances. We get to Slovakia. Uh, Maciej Tomic, another Flyers goalie prospect. <laughs> He's only 6'3", though. I hate to disappoint you. Uh, on defense, legit the most notable name is Martin is Marty Marincin. That's their most notable name outside of uh, a future draft prospect and Simon Nemec, who uh, honestly looks pretty good. Martin Marincin is their most notable guy. That's our boy. That's our boy, Martin Marincin. <laughs> This is going to be a great tournament for Leafs fans to watch because oh you get to God. see all the crap that they had on their team <laughs> before before Matthews got there. No disrespect, but Jesus. Uh, up front, Marco Dano, Thomas Yerkjo. Uh, those are the two most familiar names. The guy I'm interested in seeing, though, is Yuri Slavkovsky, another guy who likely would have torn the World Juniors to shreds. It's his draft year. He's 6'4", 225, yeah. at like 17 years old. Talk about a man. Good God. Like, yeah, the then, there's no wonder why NHL teams are like salivating over the idea of this gigantic, you know, Slovakian prospect. <laughs> but that brings us to Sweden, our final team. Schmied. The Schmieds. The featuring, Schmieds. Uh, featuring Magnus Helberg in goal. Big boy. 6'6. Talked to him once at a Pirates game. During a break and play, I was sitting behind the goal. Nice guy, great hair. Uh, on defense, highlighted by Christian Folan of Wild and Habs fame, and the forwards Jacob De La Rose, Dennis Everberg for you Avs fans out there. Uh, I think Vancouver as well. Max Freeberg. Freebird. Carl Klingberg, Marcus Kruger, Anton Lander, Joachim Nordstrom, Lucas Walmark, Lucas maybe. Walmark <laughs> from the Canes legend. <laughs> I cannot wait for this tournament because it is the most unpredictable potential shit show I have ever seen. Yeah, and I'm so excited. But what I want to do at the very least is, if I'm not mistaken, it is the top. We'll pick the top two teams. In each division, at the very least, or each group. Group A, Canada, China, Germany, the U.S. Sin, how you rank in the top two? Who's making it through? I'm, I'm still going to say Canada and U.S. I know Germany's got some pretty good stuff. I think I think the, the young talent here for both teams is, is really going to be able to, I think they're more used to larger stages now. Endo Mills. Yeah, I'm going to say Canada, and uh, you know, I'm going to say Germany. I think Germany's going to squeak it. Excuse me, can squeak through. Uh, definitely be an upset. Get that success from uh, the last tournament coming through. Yeah. Germany and the U.S. 
Screw you, Canada. Your time is done. You're nothing without the NHLers. You're nothing. I really wanted to put China on the top too, but I couldn't. Yeah. Um, and I, I would have, I would have gone Canada and Germany too, but Endo stole it. So, yeah. <laughs> can you type that? China. How do you spell that? Can you use it in a sentence? China. <laughs> Who's your favorite WWF women's wrestler of all time? <laughs> China. <laughs> it's a trick question. There are no good ones. But if I have to choose based on looks, China. China. Oh, God. <laughs> Did we just end the show there? Fuck the other predictions. <laughs> China cast. There we go. Yeah, Group B. Czechia, Denmark, Russia, Switzerland. Endo, what do you got? Czech Czechia. And uh, I think Czechia and Russia will go through. Zen. Oh, man. That's, it's so tough. I Russia has yeah. to, but like, who the hell's yeah. the other team? It could be literally any of them. I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to go Switzerland because they're all named Rito. <laughs> There you go. I'll go with uh, Russia and the uh, the Czechs as well. And in Group C, Finland, Latvia, Slovakia, and Sweden. I'm going to go Finland and Sweden because I'm boring. Sin? Uh, I'm going to go Sweden, Slovakia. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't blame you for that one. I, that, that, go. that prospect kid, he's going to light the world on fire. I'm going to go and the Mills. Finn and Swede. There you Swedish go. with all the finish. Let's go. So hopefully it lived up to your uh, your hopes and expectations, everybody. As again, it maybe not it maybe not quite the hype level that would have been there uh, had the NHLers been involved, but still a fun look to be like, oh, that's a real who's that of NHL uh, or non NHL Olympic rosters. But hey, fun stuff nonetheless. A little blast from the past for a lot of these guys. But with that, we're running long on this show. We will call it quits here tonight. Thank you very much. For listening to the show again make sure to check out our lovely sponsors at manscaped and thrive fantasy we will be back next tuesday for more god help us for what might happen over the weekend you never know we take three to four days in between recording and the hockey world can be completely flipped up uh, upside down and on its head so you never quite know what's going to happen you can find endo at endo mills on twitter and twitch you can find Sin at Sin for the Wind Productions on the YouTube side of things. Or you could add to that Twitter follow amount. Yeah. Sin for the Wind Prod. Yeah, fuckers. It's I need to get 1K. It's been like six years. Help. <laughs> 885 for the man currently. <laughs> get him there. Get him there. And to end this show, of course, you can find me everywhere at uh, at 2K24. And for the end of the show, because Sin changed his Twitter name to Sin for the Wind, the, the P... Reduction. What is this fucking P <laughs> meme? I don't know what it is, oh, and I was afraid to ask. Me? Explain this to me, please. <laughs> no, you just gotta look it up. And actually, I, I look think... up the funny definition because it's <laughs> Urban Dictionary has a bunch of definitions, and yeah. Oh man. Fair enough, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. Enjoy your weekend, unless you're me, and you're going to get buried under two feet of snow, in which case, call for help right now. Preemptively call for help. Goodbye, everybody.